Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all had a good lunch. Today, Whitney and I will be talking about Open Accelerator Infrastructure Project. Uh, I'm myself a hardware engineer at Google, but my uh, focus is on system architecture. And I'm also tech lead leading uh, uh, ML and gaming products that are GPU based at Google. Here's the agenda for our talk. I'll go over, go over the project overview. I'll talk about the work streams. And then Whitney will be talking about our amazing industry adoption uh, that we're seeing today. And then we'll also talk about our super exciting workshop sessions um, lined up for the day. So our, our project was start, started in uh, uh, 2019, back when Whitney and team came up with a specification for Open Accelerator module, which is a mezzanine card. And since then, we have expanded the scope by adding universal baseboard to our work stream. And what uni universal baseboard allows us is to support multiple OEM compliant accelerators within the system. Um, and, and our mission is to enable fast adoption of all types of accelerators, whether it's first party uh, product or a third party product um, that is OEM compliant within the system. So, and these accelerators are typically used for high performance computing applications as well as ML uh, applications, but they can also be used for any miscellaneous applications that demand a lot of compute power, a really high bandwidth communication across accelerators within the system as well as outside of the system. And they're perfect fit for supercomputing applications as well. Uh, the scope of our, our project entails physical and logical aspects of system design, which includes electrical, mechanical, thermal design aspects, as well as serviceability. Uh, but beyond that, we are also looking into control plane management and hardware security through root of trust. Uh, and besides that, we're also focusing on APIs and other tooling required uh, for these systems for traditional operating systems. And here is the long growing list of companies that are OEM compliant. A lot of these companies joined OCP just so that they can partner up with OAI uh, project work stream. We also have uh, 13 new companies. You know, these companies don't necessarily need to uh, work on accelerators, but they work on connectors, PCBs, and so on and so forth. So, we're gaining a lot of traction here, and there's a strong alliance, and it's, it's growing, um, which is, again, super exciting to see. Um, I can't really take any credit here, because I just recently joined the team, so the kudos goes to uh, Whitney and team for getting us to the stage where we're seeing really broad and fast adoption in the industry. And here is our evolution and roadmap. So like I said, we started off back in 2019 with just the Open Accelerator module. Uh, which was uh, designed to support up to 450 watt TDP, which was pretty high back in 2018, 2019 timeframe. And uh, the bandwidth, the high bandwidth was uh, supported through 25 gig NRZ. Now fast forward to today, uh, we're trying to release OEM 1.5 spec uh, in the next few weeks, uh, along with universal baseboard uh, version 1.5 spec. And uh, within this spec, we will enable support for 112 gig PAM4. Uh, as well as uh, PCI Gen 5 and 700 watt TDP per accelerator. Uh, now just keep in mind the UBB, which is a, again the universal baseboard, it has up to eight accelerators. So uh, we're talking about close to six kilowatt uh, just for the baseboard power delivery. And our, our mission is to essentially keep up with the uh, technology and trends, right? So we're not gonna done with, uh, be done with 1.5, we'll have 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, or what have you because we have to keep up with the industry. Uh, and when it comes to technology, you know, I'm referring to advanced cooling, advanced power delivery, uh, advanced CERTES, high-speed CERTES. And uh, when it comes to trends, um, you know, uh, we have to start putting in a lot of emphasis on control plane management and root of trust, especially in, 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 in cloud environment to get utmost security for these devices. And then uh, in, in the first half or early, uh, Second half of next year, we will release a 2.0 version. It'll still have the 112 gig PAM4 CERTES and PCI Gen 5, as well as PCI Gen 6 support. Uh, but the power will go up to one kilowatt. So imagine that. You know, we started off at 450 watts and, uh, about two years ago, and we're reaching one kilowatt next year, uh, which again requires immense engineering discipline, as well as uh, incorporating uh, uh, new and advanced technologies. Uh, to get us to our mission. 
And in the 2.0 spec, we will also support um, you know, security features to enable root of trust for highly programmable devices like OEM and other components that belong in the UBB. And these are our work streams. So uh, broadly speaking, the OEM system slash high speed is, is mostly about system design, system topology uh, to support intranode as well as scale out applications. Um, and this encompasses chassis spec, hardware spec, system management, security requirements, and what have you. Of course, high-speed 30s is a critical component. As I mentioned earlier, it's not just about compute, which requires a lot of power and advanced cooling. It's also about high bandwidth communication across these accelerators within the system as well as outside the system. So we're encompassing all of this in our um, OAI uh, work streams. And then speaking of power, like I mentioned, you know, we're increasing power dramatically every other generation or, or every generation, so to speak. Um, this, again, requires um, really advanced uh, technologies, both at the module level as well as the system level. And then speaking of cooling, we have a great talk from Chris Malone uh, in the next session. Uh, cooling is getting really, really important for uh, uh, you know, our project work streams as well as our uh, project deliverables. So here again, we look at advanced technologies and try to stay ahead of the curve. And then uh, we also have OAM tooling, uh, which is super critical because uh, diags and tools are gonna be really important to debug all sorts of uh, problems that we can run into in these complex systems. Now with that, I'm gonna have Whitney come on the stage. She's gonna talk about the industry adoption. So Pankaj just talked about a little bit the history, uh, what we do for the OAI project, and from 2019 to today, right? Um, it's pretty exciting that um, OAM spec is actually widely got adopted by the industry. So these are the, the true OAM devices are actually already out, right? And a couple of them, as you can see, for example, um, the Gaudi OEM from Intel Habana, it's already in production, and then you may see the news from AWS. And then uh, we have OEM um, AMD, I think yesterday, or this week, earlier this week, AMD announced the MI200 product line that is also using OEM form factor. And then NVIDIA, uh, we also have NVIDIA OEM um, A100 product as well. And um, Inflame, it's a Chinese, like a accelerator supplier, they already have the OEM actually going to production, mainly like adopted in China, and it's in production with the liquid cooling right now. Um, and also Cambricom, it's also our Chinese company and making the training chips, right? And then um, Intel PVC, um, I think this is, yeah, already a public information. And then we are working with accelerator suppliers to enable more OAM form factors and then um, basically get into the um, industry to, to help the industry actually faster adopt the AI training related solutions. So these slides showing um, the OAI OAM systems we actually enabled like across the industry. There are um, partners from different um, supplier, right? Um, ODM, OEM, and then um, Facebook we already have a, like OEM based Zion system. Actually later today, uh, we have a session to talk about the Zion design. It's actually based on OEM form factor and then we are contributing this back and design into OCP during the OCP summit this time. And then there are Habana based system. It's already getting to production, um, I think to AWS. Um, and, and thanks for the other like partners like Inspur, WinWin, ZT, uh, super micro hive, and then they are actually helping to enable more OEM, OAI based like a reference system and also get the customer faster adopt uh, in this field. Um, with that, um, i like to share a little bit more like about this afternoon. So moving forward, right, um, Penka just mentioned in the future, the goal of this um, or the scope of this um, project, right, one is where um, getting the industry working together and then to standardize some of the things that how we can shape the industry in this AI space. Um, so there are a couple like a key 
things we really need to work on and we call for action for your participation to work on the things like high speed, um, the, 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 um, the, the high speed related, right? And they interconnect, they open interconnect and we're gonna have an awesome panel this afternoon and talking about what are the future, um, what are the huge, like uh, the giant tech company are thinking in this space and then they are thermal and cooling, right? We are going to enable and solve them while OEM. How we're gonna deliver the power? How we're gonna cool the OEM modules? Um, these are the critical things that um, we, this group, right? It's, it's like working with the, the community together and, and see how we can find a way to solve that. And then um, there are, so I just mentioned the, and also the cooling mentioned about the power delivery. These are the two like a forward looking, right? So we got a like a um, expertise in this area. We're gonna talk about the forward looking, right? What we, what we are thinking in the future for the power delivery for the advanced cooling technologies. And then uh, we have a panel gonna talk about the um, open interconnect. And then we also have a, a couple um, contribution and announcement from Intel, from uh, Meta. And um, I think that's it. And then we have some video on demand. And then these are the things like, for example, system management and also the, the how we can enable the high speed, um, like a cable interconnect thing. Um, the video is online, you can check it out. So with that, um, I'm happy to kick off the, the OAI track for this afternoon. Um, and yeah, um, Chris, yeah, thank you.